This is the Fens and Wixel Mosses. A nature reserve which straddles the border between England and Wales. Home to thousands of rare and important species, including the green hair streak butterfly. The site covers 2,500 acres and is a wetland of special scientific interest. I've got up super early this morning in the hope that I may just hear a very special sound. It's a sound which has been missing from these parts for over three decades, but it's back, and it's the sound of drumming. And the drumming, of course, belongs to the snipe. So far this morning, I've heard cuckoo, which you can hear right now over there. I've heard robin, and there's lots of geese around, but no drumming yet. Today, it's clear that this rare lowland peat bog is thriving but that hasn't always been the case. In this acidic, waterlogged habitat, plant material becomes partly decomposed. And as it builds up over thousands of years, it's compressed to form peat. But as recently as 1990, the mosses here were drained and decimated, with the peat cut and used for fuel and garden compost. I've always loved a bog. It's a lovely squelchy sound. <laughs> You've got to love the squelch. 30 years ago, the mosses were transformed. And today, Ellie Williams from the Bog Life Project is continuing to help heal the scars of its industrial past for the benefit of wildlife, but also the health of the planet. From a climate change perspective, these are vital for storing carbon. Even just on this bog alone, we store two to three million tonnes, which is a vast amount that can be locked away for thousands of years. When a bog is drained or it's planted upon, that exposes that peat to the air, allowing it to oxidise and become carbon dioxide. So you're actually releasing that thousands of years worth of carbon into the atmosphere, which is a double reason as to why we should restore these bogs. Incredibly, a healthy waterlogged bog can store more carbon acre for acre than a forest. And the secret to this habitat superpower lies with this, sphagnum moss. Now, it might not look like much, but it can hold 20 times its own weight in water. I mean, creating a blanket just like this one, it locks in that rainfall, keeping the soil below nice and moist. Now, a new method of keeping the bog in tip-top condition is being pioneered, and sphagnum moss is being planted to restore nine acres of damaged peatland. So we have to wiggle that in there. Yeah, and just plug them in and come back around the edge. It's quite simple, actually, isn't it? Yeah, nice and simple. That's but not too not bad. <laughs> How many have you done so far? So we've done 30,000 so far, and then we've got another 70,000 to go. So we've actually got eight species of sphagnum here. So they took sphagnum from the site. They were grown at a lab and now ready to be planted. We want to get a biodiverse blanket if we can, so um, we're planting as many as possible. As well as capturing carbon, these rejuvenated peatlands will benefit the many species that thrive here, like the snipe, whose ground nests are kept well hidden from predators. But it also means that they've eluded me too. But luckily, there's still a lot more to see here including the raft spider, who rests on the water's surface to feel for the vibrations of potential prey. And the white-faced darter too, which is just over here. It's perfectly adapted, evolved to live amongst these bogs, because they lay their eggs and the larvae develops in the sphagnum moss. And because of the acidity of the water, it means that there's no fish here, giving the larvae protection to grow. So it's imperative that we protect these type of habitats and even perhaps create more for years to come. Mm -hmm.